the uh, advantages of not being first, you know, not being second, not being third, you kind of grow on what is about a couple of things that came up uh, in the earlier presentations. Uh, uh, about 50 miles since the Eagle flight, my house. So, uh, fly fishing, not on the Kootenai River, which is where the Kootenai from or close to them. Uh, but they talked about doing testing. And last presentation, they talked about the importance of training. And solutions is a critical, state critical systems testing company. And it's an engineering manager, uh, fourth department, he's sitting in the back. He's the director of business management uh, for our company. One of the things that we're challenged with is, and I'm going to relate to the, uh, the other three questions before this, is we're a testing company. We do critical systems testing. People don't go to school to become critical systems testing individuals. So we have. Uh, months ago, the CEO called me up and he said, hey, I'm thinking about the idea of a drone and use the CFS as um, to help us train new users. And uh, Dave, I want to thank you for today because I saw uh, in the previous two presentations, people are thinking about this. And, uh, Activity that you're doing, it's, it has real life practical applications as well. Um, because there's a need there for critical systems to test people. We have, we have a tough time finding them, and I'm sure that everybody else who uh, either employs uh, engineers or our companies that work as subcontractors that employ test engineers. That uh, need that. So I uh, appreciate the effort you guys are going through it, and uh, wanted to maybe find doing research on your website. Uh, my present uh, a year and a half ago, um, I met Dave and Susie, and we uh, proposed a methodology for doing testing of of, of the CFS and uh, initial. Activity uh, uh, pilot program that we conducted this year. And we've written a white paper, and uh, this presentation, at least part of it, was given recently at the PEA conference, and it will be part of the proceedings of that, that, uh, that conference. Uh, what do you expect? We do computer testing and areas. Uh, we have uh, tracks with uh, Honeywell on, on the open. Uh, they call it their core software. It's not the core software that we're talking about here, but it's similar uh, conceptually. It's similar. We've been working on testing that square for, for about four years now. Uh, critical system for um, we've got uh, projects on C5, the, the uh, bombard airplane. Uh, we've recently finished projects for the, the uh, Honeywell data computer. We've done a gyroscope computer and a number of other types of systems. So now branching out into the medical testing field. Uh, our based in Hopkins, Minnesota, uh, in the western suburb of Minneapolis, and a number of metal device development companies in the area have gotten a toehold into uh, testing as well. So the, the pilot project, excuse me, the uh, project uh, was basically to demonstrate the ESB, what we call ESB, Requirements-based testing methodology and a tool that we refer to as a test compass that implicitly automates the requirements-based testing uh, method. And the proposal <coughs> was to demonstrate methodology 
and is looked at through the CFS community. This was one when we started the the whole process to you know come and talk to the workshop when at the time the workshop wasn't uh, scheduled, yet, but uh, that was one of the goals was to come present to the community the ideas that we put into this pilot. <coughs> Evaluate the DXB methodology with respect to the configuration verification challenge. Um, if you're CFS, there are a number of parameters that get set during compile time, and the discussions with the uh, people from NASA was that for the most part, the boundary analysis on these parameters was not done. They picked the default. And the testing of the components of the CFS, the different apps, and so forth, done. But the boundary analysis for the parameters was not done. And uh, so we took this on as a challenge, and we didn't attempt to uh, develop tests for parts of the systems or the apps that were already tested. So the basically the application testing. We didn't do anything with spec, which we kind of in the proposed. If we have time to do this, we would like to try. Um, would be a new application. I'm not sure what's getting installed here. Um, but a new application <laughs> that uh, had not more of the system level testing versus uh, the parameter testing. Computer, while I'm standing up here. Switch. Okay, there you go. I had a presentation one time at an ITEA conference, and right in the beginning, the computer crashed. Say a joke, but uh, I don't tell jokes very well because I did. <laughs> so uh, the methodology you can, standard, you know, life cycle of uh, you know development testing, and uh, we just apply it. Basically, try to automate it, and uh, very quickly we are are oriented toward the requirements and kind of buying requirement analysis and test design together. Uh, there are kind of components of it, but there are also separate or, uh, consolidated components as well. Produce assignments. Uh, and uh, basically, if, if you apply this correctly at the very beginning, you can get a training and analysis right at the front. And uh, this is a different thing or something that typically in a, in a major program, we don't see until late that they come in and say, okay, we've got to do our traceability analysis. And that quite often you find out that, oh, we messed up our testing because we got new requirements that didn't get put into the trace matrix. The test development uh, is very much a, a, a manual approach as well as a, it has an automated component to it. Uh, the following two is the test procedure development, test execution. <coughs> and we're 
about 157 uh, generation parameters. And if I push a button and execute all of those, it will basically generate all of the test cases and re-execute all of the tests that we did in uh, just a matter of minutes. And uh, I'll explain that as we go through. So when we do the analysis and at the front end, uh, first of all, looking for testable requirements. Uh, is there a set of outputs, some process that's defined? And uh, essentially, we're as, as we do this, spreadsheet and uh, determine where the requirements are going to be allocated to what test. So in this uh, use case symbol, you see the lower right-hand corner, uh, there's four tests and then the number uh, corresponds to the requirements. So the correspond to actual uh, requirements and numbers in the uh, help make the application and requirements document. In uh, the lower right, we estimate you know, a development hours, uh, you know, what, what the, the test amount is going to be. In this way, you, we, we are essentially, with the tool, we're creating a database of information. Okay. This, this particular, we, we capture the requirements, we capture the estimated time and the actual duration, and we're capturing the status, how, much, how long it's taking. The real key part of test is the ML activity diagram. And that diagram links back to the use case. So on here uh, is essentially a, a state machine. Not a very simple example. Uh, we had some examples. For instance, uh, we use the uh, the tool for for news on Lion, and had some state machines that had upwards to 100 transmissions, and uh, so they're complicated state machines. Uh, if we put one of those on those, you wouldn't be able to read it. So that's why it's a little smaller. So just to give. A um, what you're seeing there, there's uh, three transitions. Those correspond to test scenarios. So essentially, three sets of test cases. Okay. Um, above each one, those indicate the. Um, so, for instance, the, uh, the left one, if the HS util average num interval is less than or bound, so you're Test engineer, you set a, a variable, and if it's less than the left, the, the left bound, you'll create a test case that takes the left branch. Greater than the, the, the constant there, then it takes the middle branch. Anything other than that, essentially, the other branch is the valid range, so it'd be in, within the lower bound or upper bound. Okay, so you can annually you can look at this diagram and say, oh, well, let's see, what's the lower bound? Lower bound zero, I'll pick negative one as a sample. Bound, not sure what it is, 64, I think. I'll pick six as an upper bound variable. And if you know, eight, we could probably have a set of people in here and you don't come up with a different number of test cases and you come up with different samples. Um, the things that we try to do with this tool, we also use it as training training mechanism for new engineers. So we, we teach them the theory of boundary analysis testing. Um, and that's what the tool will do in the conditions, if you flex conditions, the uh, aviation industry has a uh, method they refer to as modified condition decision uh, testing. We uh, minimize the number of test calls that you need for each of the different conditions. And uh, so the tool that set of test case samples. And so an example, uh, we run a 
through the, the test case generator automatically develops the sample. Okay, so minimum value, it was uh, one, and the maximum value is 64. The tool generates the boundary values for you. Now, if you have multiple boundaries or multiple variables, then the tool will combine those together into the test case. So, this would be the set of test cases for this particular example. Um, DOAB, which is the avionics uh, methodology for the uh, vendor, tells you you do robust testing and you do normal boundary testing. So, they generate that for you. Okay, the test feature is actually a uh, tool created for each individual project. Right here we generate header files and then I actually compile those files. Um, out of addition, they don't compile, they generate an error message, an inbound, then it just it doesn't compile. Any other example? Um, okay. Benefits of our and automation, we rapidly did 157 tests in the 10 application areas. We provide full test case design. So you visually see that structure, and when you do reviews and so forth with test with action engineers, you can compare. Did you really get the is the requirement correct? Is my understanding of the requirement? And you've got to make sure both of those. Otherwise, you have a set of four plus tests. So, conclusions of our uh, pilot project uh, that we have well defined repeatable process. Uh, if, you have, if you have changes in requirements, you modify your model. Common CFS application verification methodology, I think it could. And next step, we see the virtual system uh, from NASA, but we haven't had a chance yet to uh, do that and do any testing uh, in that environment, but that's something we hope to do down the road. Questions? No. <laughs> Is all your testing on a requirement, or do you do any testing that uh, like has, has uh, from any hazard slowdown, like you know, hazard analysis? No, they are testing, you know, software testing, functional based testing, functional based testing based on requirements, based on not requirement. based off the of controls of hazard or anything like that. The biggest problem is we have is having bad requirements. We submit a lot of problem reports based on that. Do you test it as a CFS system as a whole, or do you test individual apps separately? In this um, pilot, we tested the individual apps. We tested the individual um, yeah, it, it was the individual apps. It was the the duration parameters of the individual app. So we actually we didn't test the apps themselves. We just tested the parameters, <coughs> those, those configuration parameters. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Paul. Mm.